doctor. Trust Vital for your family's health. Hello and welcome to the show. We can clone mammals, we can send a spacecraft to Mars, but we can't cure the common cold and probably will never be able to because there are over 200 viruses that cause the cold. But while we can't cure colds, we can get better at avoiding them and making them shorter and less severe. Adults get about two to four colds every year and kids get eight to 10. The good news is once you get one particular cold virus, you develop immunity to that strain for life. So by the time you hit 60, if you're in the norm, you'll average only one cold per year. But who wants to wait until you're 60? And Dre and I certainly don't. Well, cold viruses love the warm, moist environment of your nose and upper respiratory tract, which is where they grow and wreak their havoc. Those viruses get to your nasal passages via different routes. Some are carried on hands and common objects such as phones or door handles. Once you get the viral particles on your hands, all you need to do is touch your nose, your mouth, your eyes, and the virus has found a new temporary home. Some viruses enter via airborne droplets through the air when an infected person near to you coughs or sneezes. You're not infected, are you, right? Luckily not. <laughs> but a frightening thought is a single sneeze can carry up to 29 million germs and viruses. So think of the, the huge risk of being infected if you share an office space, a room or a car with somebody that's ill. You're so right. I mean, take this as an illustration. Baking powder, if I sneeze into this baking powder, ha, 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 Look at that white powder all over me and in the air. Viruses can stay in the air for up to three hours like that, which means it's inevitable that you'll come into contact with these germs, even more so in winter when we're all huddling indoors. So if you can't avoid them, how do you defend yourself? Well, your immune system is your body's natural defense against germs that cause common colds. It takes time to build up those defenses, and if you start now, you could optimize your immune system by winter time to make sure you have the best possible defense against the onslaught of cold viruses at the office, in the taxi, or as you said, Andrea, at home. Well, your immune system can definitely benefit by dietary factors, and the first of them being antioxidants. Now, green tea is packed with antioxidants known to support the immune system. Yeah. One of my favorites against cold and flu in winter is garlic. Absolutely. Rich in antioxidants, but also has actual antimicrobial or bug fighting properties. That's right, and you actually have to ingest those garlic uh, you know, cloves. You can't your hang neck. it around your neck, that just doesn't work. It'll keep everyone away from you, but not the viruses. <laughs> Well, an another source of nutrition uh, would be your minerals, notably selenium that we find in um, Brazil nuts, yeah. zinc that we find in sunflower seeds, but nuts and seeds in general are packed with minerals that also support your immune system and actually increases your immune cells' potential to fight off infections. Brilliant. I'm guessing this is vitamin C. That's correct. I mean, that research has shown how vitamin C increases your immune cells' fighting potential, That's increases right. their longevity and their activity. So for winter, a nice citrus salad is just the thing. Fantastic. And when you say citrus salad, you're just going to toss it all together. Well, okay? here we've got some grapefruit, Great. lemon and lime, and we can top it with some seeds. So there goes your minerals, antioxidants, vitamins, good for your immune system. And that will, if not prevent you from getting cold, actually shorten the duration, which is great. It can, yes. Okay. Um, Andrea, what about sweet potatoes? Well, they're rich in carotenoids that are converted to vitamin A, which is also good for your immune system. You know, when we have a cold, hot fluids help increase the movement of nasal mucus, which in turn clears the airways, easing congestion, which is why hot toddies are effective, provided they're without the alcohol and added sugar, as that can suppress your immune response. When it comes to chicken soup, though, Andrea, what is the reason it works? Well, I think there's a factor of comfort food and a loved one serving you some soup can help. But if you look at the ingredients that we put in chicken soup, um, there's definitely some immune boosting properties. Um, we have mushrooms, vitamin C that's in parsley, the um, garlic, once again, with always, antimicrobial yeah. properties, chilies, and my favorite one is actually yeah, the ginger. ginger absolutely, mm. and there are a whole lot of great properties and great things that ginger does, aren't they? they? That's right, I mean, it has expectorant properties, and then also it has an effect on reducing fever, and yeah. it has anti-inflammatory properties as well. Andre, thank you. So what you're really saying, once again, is that food is our medicine. So take our advice, and hopefully you have nothing to sneeze at. As I clear the uh, <coughs> germs and snot from my shirt, 
Chocolate cake is nothing to scoff at, but it could be something to cough at. Wheat and gluten intolerance is on the increase with around 10 to 15% of the population suffering from it. But thankfully, Justine comes to the rescue with a gluten wheat-free chocolate cake. Trust Vital for your family's health. I wanna live the best life.